color you also have yourself the user manual and the start guys which also has a couple of apple stickers then you have the USB-C to C cable and the power adapter inside the box below that. Turning it on for the first time, the setup process is very quick and easy and it took me no more than five minutes to get in and start using my iPad Air. So reason number one why I recommend anyone that's looking to buy an iPad to go for the iPad Air 2022 edition is because of the new M1 chip that's inside the iPad Air. Previously, they've not utilized that chip in the Air models, but they've had them in the Pro models. And one of the benefits of getting this iPad Air is that the M1 chip has not been downclocked by Apple for the Air Edition. So essentially what that means is that the performance is pretty much identical to that of the iPad Pro. So what that essentially means is that the new iPad Air has the same 3.2 gigahertz operating frequency and the same 8 gigabyte of RAM in addition to the M1 chip as the iPad Pro model. So performance wise, you're gonna get all of the same types of benefits as the iPad Pro but in an Air model. So for me, you know, that's one of the key things when I have an iPad is does it perform well and will it last me a very long time? What Apple have done here is they've bridged the gap very close between the Air and the Pro models and you also save a lot of money. Now, of course, there are key differences. For example, the base model on the storage is only 64 gigabytes on the Air, whereas the starting base model is 120 gigabytes on the iPad Pros and it goes up up to two terabytes. Here it maxes out to 256 gigabytes for the top spec on the Wi-Fi edition. But you also have the same battery life and then it also has support now for the same types of iPad accessories like the Magic Keyboard and also the second gen Apple Pencil. In terms of the pricing, the 64 gigabyte iPad Air is 569 pounds here in the UK. If you go for the Pro model, the base version of that is 749 pounds. So essentially you're saving 180 pounds to buy an iPad that is just like the Pro version. So that for me is a big win. The second reason is that center stage is now available for the iPad Air, just like it is for the iPad Pros. And it works with FaceTime and other apps like Zoom. And it uses the new updated 12 megapixel selfie camera on the front of the iPad Air. And it actually does a really good job. So if you do make a lot of calls, this is a really great benefit. So reason number three, I would say is for the performance of the gaming. If you are someone that likes to play games on your iPads because it has a larger screen, then you are really gonna benefit from the M1 chip in this. As well as the eight gigabytes of RAM, you will really feel the performance enhancement if you do use this for gaming, or even if you use this for doing a lot of productivity for your creative workflow, so a lot of image and photo editing that takes a lot of power, that's where you would really notice the differences by having an M1 chip on this. So here's an example of me playing a game. And for me personally, I've played a few games on this and the performance, I cannot fault. It has been absolutely smooth from the first moment I've opened up the game. There was no lag, there was no buffer, there was no latency. And as you can see, it performs extremely well even on the base edition of the iPad Air, which you may fill up quite quickly with the 64 gigabytes of storage. Reason number four is the USB-C 3.1 generation two port that comes on the iPad. Now, a lot of the iPads in the past do have a USB-C port on there. The upgrade on the USB-C port on this new iPad Air has a new transfer rate that maxes out at 10 gigabytes per second. It's not quite the 40 gigabytes per second on the iPad Pro, but that would allow you to be more productive to anything you want to utilize that port for. Some examples would be you have an external SSD that you want to transfer videos and photos and documents, etc., to your iPad directly. This can do it very quickly and save you a lot of time. Another accessory that you might use this for is a USB-C to SD card adapter. So I take a lot of pictures with my camera and if I wanted to transfer them to my iPad, it can be done very quickly using this and the new USB-C port. Let me show you an example now. Okay, I've just put my SD card into the adapter. Going to connect this, I have the Photos app open. Plug it in, it will pop up here on the left. There you go, devices, SanDisk. Have all of my photos that I've taken of this iPad. If I do import all, look how quick that completed. Literally within one second, it appeared and now it's there in my library. So I can cycle through all of the pictures I've taken of my new iPad. So to use this for your productive workflow, if you are a photo editor or anything like that, 
this is going to make a huge difference and of course it's not on the same speed level as the pro but to get everything done you can do it very easily with 10 gigabytes per second transfer speeds which is more than enough to whatever type of work that you do not only that you can even use the brand new studio display by apple or even the pro display xdr with the ipad air 5 since it can support one 6k display i don't have any of the other apple studio displays but i have this ultra wide lg monitor that i power with my usb c port so connecting the ipad to this you can see was very quick and easy and i can view my ipad on a much larger screen which will help me in my creative workflow And finally, reason number five, I would say this is more of a personal preference than a specific reason why you should get it. But the iPad Air gives you the option to buy it in five different colors. The iPad Pro only has it in two standard colors, which, you know, of course, if you guys don't want the simple space gray type design, then you can switch between different options like the blue, the purple, and this one that I have, Starlight, which is actually a very nice color. It's unique and it reflects other colors off very well and it just makes it pop. So for me personally, having the option to choose between multiple different colors is always a bonus. All right, guys, those are my top five reasons why I think if you're on the market for an iPad, go for the 2022 iPad Air. If you guys that have purchased this have any other reasons that I haven't mentioned, go ahead and drop a comment down below and let everyone else know why you think it's definitely worth buying. And if you did find this useful, make sure to hit that like button. I have pretty cool Apple related videos coming out very soon and I have new tech videos out every week. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those ones. And if you do want to know a little bit more about the capabilities of this and you haven't made your mind up, make sure to ask me and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll catch you guys at the next one. Take care.